Hey everyone, Andrew at Microphonic Designs here with a quick video. This is actually for my clients at Reedy High School for the staff over there. So uh, I decided to put this on the YouTube channel because I thought a lot of folks might find it interesting or educational. But again, this is specifically for uh, my client, uh, Reedy High School. And uh, this is going to be a tour of their main stage file so that they know how to set things up. Now, for the guys at Reedy, what's up, y'all? I just finished your main stage concert, and I got all of the parts and everything in Sibelius. Uh, finally finished up, all the samples are mapped, and I want to give you a quick tour of what's going on so that you can set this up uh, properly uh, before I come out next time. And so I'm going to give you sort of the quick start. So if you're watching this right before rehearsal, uh, this is the information that you need to know uh, to get it up and running. Uh, so it's important that your TF rack in your middle mixer, uh, I'm sorry, middle synth cart is connected to the laptop with USB. And I think you guys have already been doing that. Uh, there are six synthesizer channels, uh, which is 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20 in the TF rack. And so this will, you know, sort of automatically link up once you open the laptop. The main stage session, when you open it, there are uh, a couple things you have to do. There are three synths, uh, you know, in the main stage concert here. And the, the one big thing that you have to do is go up to main stage, uh, preferences, audio. And then where it says audio output, yours is going to say TF rack or TF mixer or something of the sort. Now, mine says Scarlett 18i8 because that's the audio interface I have. But we're actually using your TF rack as the audio interface for main stage. So make sure that this says TF uh, under the audio output. And then the next thing that you need to do is go to the concert. So click on this blue or, or the, the orange folder, highlight it blue. And what you're going to do is you're going to see this green, turquoise, and dark blue channel strip where it says output. You need to change this. You're going to see output. And you'll see here that I have eight outputs. On the TF, it's going to have 32 outputs. So uh, the one for synth one needs to go to outputs 15 and 16, which again, you'll click on this little rectangle here output and you'll look for channels 15 and 16. Synth 2 needs to go to outputs 17 and 18. So again, same thing, you'll click on this rectangle, you'll go to output and you'll select 17 and 18. And then synth 3 here, uh, again, same thing, but it goes to 19 and 20. So that's the quick start. Um, the other thing that you'll need to do is go into the layout tab, you'll need to highlight the keyboard on screen, you'll click assign, and then you'll press a note on the physical keyboard that you want to play that part. As I understand it, from the podium perspective, the innermost synth cart is going to go to synth one. The middle synth cart is going to go to the one on the bottom. And the outermost synth cart uh, closest to the end goal or, or the, uh, you know, the end sideline is going to be the middle one. And um, that's just what I understand. The That's how the parts are assigned. Um, so again, you'll click the keyboard, hit the assign button, press a note on the physical keyboard, and then click the assign button again. And you should see that all three synths get assigned to their perspective uh, on screen keyboard. So that is the quick and dirty of uh, how you need to set this up. Let me give you a little more formal tour now if you have a few extra minutes uh, so that you guys can become a little more familiar with uh, what we have going on here. Um, so we're going to skip back over to the TF rack again. Uh, the TF rack is an actual mixing console, just like the one that you have up front. And what we're able to do, because it's a full console on its own, we can use that as an audio interface instead of something like a Focusrite Scarlett or a Personas audio box. It lets us hook up to the computer through USB so that we're not, um, you know, using an audio interface into a cable, into the mixer. It's just, it, it eliminates some stuff in the middle there. Uh, it also allows us to basically take the outputs directly from main stage and feed them into these different channels. So this allows us to have three synthesizer parts independent of one another coming from main stage into the TF rack uh, so that you have uh, control over the volume of each one 
independently. Uh, this is also what allows us to have an individual monitor for each synthesizer. So for example, synth three is also being fed uh, to output number three in the like on the back of the TF rack and it's sending only the signal from synth three to that monitor. Uh, same thing for synths one and two. So again, this has to be set up, uh, the outputs in main stage, and this have to be active. It all has to be connected together for them to hear anything. So it's important, it's really important to understand that main stage is what is actually producing the sounds. So I know that you do have a Yamaha Motif XF8, and then you've got um, some other synth in the... Um, innermost synth cart and so forth. So you've got two hardware synthesizers, but they are not supposed to be creating sounds internally. They are merely MIDI controllers this year. So all three keyboards that you have in each of your you know, synth carts are not supposed to have audio cables connected to the audio outputs on the back only the USB basically, and then the power cable. Those are the only two things that should, should be connected to the back of your keyboards. Power cable and USB going to the USB hub to the laptop. Those three individual keyboards are going to control the on-screen keyboards here in main stage. And this is what's going to convert the MIDI data into actual sounds that you hear through the big system and through the individual monitors. Now, by default, when you you know, follow the steps that I described earlier in the quick start uh, and the TF rack is booted on and they actually have their um, audio cables connected for their individual monitors, everything should work. They should hear sound. We were getting sound the other day on Saturday. It just all has to be set up for them to do subs or anything. Um, so again, a little more of a complex setup than normal, but I'm, you know, working with what we have to make all of this work really well for you guys. Um, Jumping back into main stage here, uh, again, it's really important that you get the outputs lined up with, you know, the, the channels in the TF rack. So, you know, synth one needs to go to, to outputs 15 and 16, which will line up with channels 15 and 16 in the TF rack. Synth two needs to go to outputs 17 and 18 in main stage to line up with channels 17 and 18 in the TF rack and so forth. That part's really important. Um, and then as we go through the concert here, you'll notice that all three synths are color coded. So synth one has the green, synth two has the turquoise, and synth three has the dark blue. And that color code scheme is uh, throughout the entire concert. It's all consistent. So that way, you know, if you're trying to figure out what instrument or sound you want to turn up or down, you can just sort of figure out, okay, who has this sound? All right, it's, you know, synth three, that's a dark blue. I'm looking for dark blue over on the right-hand side. And so when the kids are performing, they should be in perform mode, which is gonna look like this. But uh, when you guys are in rehearsal, you'll probably have this screen pulled up a lot so that you can come, come over to the channel strip area here and turn certain sounds up or down. And I've tried to label them uh, as best I can. Some of the more complex, um, some of the more complex sampler instruments for synth two have multiple outputs from the one sampler instrument, but all you need to worry about is, for example, at the end of the show, you've got the sampler, you've got the choir samples, and then the sequence at the very end. Um, and you'll see that uh, throughout the concert. Um, so again, over here on the right area is where you're gonna find your individual sounds. You can turn them up or down and make sure when you save, you save it with the date. I need to update the date on this concert. Uh, and then you also have um, reverb over here as well that you can turn up or down. Now, I think the reverb should be at a decent level, but uh, again, you do have the ability to turn the reverbs up or down. Uh, this little thing here where it says sends, this is the reverb send for each of these. So if you wanted to, for example, uh, reduce the amount of reverb on the dark strings, you would basically click on this little circle and pull down. You can also double click to type in the number and uh, basically jump to whatever setting you want there. But this little circle where it says sends, this is how much reverb uh, is basically, you know, how much of this signal is going to the reverb. Uh, all three synthesizers also have their own reverb so that 
you have total control over how much reverb is on each instrument. So uh, here, when I click on the concert level, which affects everything in the whole main stage file, um, again, you've got your three different reverbs that uh, you can basically change the volume on. And you'll see that, that uh, the synth one verb is routed to synth one, which is this here. The synth two verb is routed to synth two outputs and so forth. And so um, output one, two should not be in use. This is something that uh, you do not need to touch as long as you set this other stuff up correctly. So uh, kind of a long video. I hope that this gives an idea of how the main stage concert should be set up. Uh, make sure that uh, you guys save, uh, you know, do the command shift S or come up to file, save as whenever you make major changes to um, the volume levels and different things like that. And as always, if you have questions, give me a call. But that is sort of the rundown over everything. The last thing I'll leave you with is that the octave for the synth two part, which again is gonna be played by the furthest out synth cart. Uh, so not the middle one, but the furthest out towards the side, uh, the end goal or the, um, the end zone. That's, what, that's the word I'm thinking of, end zone. Um, the octave in the sheet music is very important. Uh, you have an 88 key motif XF8, a lot of keys on that thing. The very bottom C on screen should line up with the very bottom C on the actual keyboard. And the MIDI note should be C0. So when we look at the sheet music, uh, let me pull up Sibelius. Uh, so when you look at the sheet music, that very first note of the whole show for synth two is a C zero. And that note should line up with the very bottom C on the keyboard, both physically and on screen. Um, so all right, guys, hope you found this helpful. As always, feel free to reach out. You guys have my number and email and all that good stuff. Um, please reach out uh, if you have questions about this, because it's a very unusual way of setting things up but I think it's going to save a lot of headache during the season. Uh, all right, talk to you guys soon. Later.